Hello, welcome back. In this video, I will be discussing the first part of the 26th Philippine Mathematical Olympiad as preparation perhaps for Filipino students who will be joining the 28th edition of the Mathematical Olympiad this year. The qualifying stage, if you haven't heard yet, consists of a few parts, most of which involves identifying uh, concrete, an concrete answers. So this is generally the, uh, what you call that, the filter stage of the, of the competition because eventually um, the questions will be mostly about proving. That's proof-based uh, problems which will prepare the uh, participants for the inter International Mathematical Olympiad. Okay, so let's answer the first problem here. We are given that A, B, and C are positive integers satisfying this, satisfying this equation. So for these types of problems, generally what we do is we rewrite the given rational expression as 3 plus the rational part. So it's 14 over 100, which is also equivalent to 3 plus 7 over 50. And then... We find the reciprocal of that, that fraction we have, so it's 1 over 50 over 7. And then, we rewrite 50 over 7 as a mixed number. We can do that by dividing 50 by 7, so that's 7 remainder 1. So we can write this as 3 plus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 7. Since the last part, the last... Uh, the last term here already has a numerator of 1, we're done and we are able to find the values of a, b, and c. a equals 3, b equals 7, and c equals 7. Therefore, the value of a plus b plus c is 3 plus 7 plus 7, which is 17. So the correct answer for number 1 is 17. Now, I'm leaving you the challenge here to show that uh, a must necessarily be 3. I mean, you can write technically write 3.14 as 2 plus 1.14. I want you to think about why this is, this is not the case. That this 377 is the unique representation of this number in this notation. If you, if you figure out why, please comment it down in the comment section. Okay, if you need help, I'll gladly assist you as well in the comment section. But for, for the purposes of this discussion, let's leave it as uh, 17 for now, as identifying just the, the, the one that we are looking for. Okay, so for number one, it's 17. Number two, we are given the length of the diagonals of a rhombus as 14 and 48. So remember that the area of a rhombus is equal to one half times the diagonal, the product of the diagonals. So this is simply just equal to one half times 14 times 48. So you canceled out a common factor of 2. So this is 2, this becomes 7. So the answer here is 48 times 7, which is 336. Therefore, the correct answer here is B, 336. 36. Okay, so just remember the formula, 1 half times the product of the diagonals. Next, the arithmetic mean of 11 integers is 10. After adding 20 to each of the first 4 and subtracting 24 from the last 7, what is the new mean? So to answer this one, Let's say that the numbers are x1, x2, x3, and so on until x sub 11. We know that the mean is 10. Oops, we know that the mean is 10, and we can get that by getting the sum divided by the number, which is uh, 11. So this means that x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so on until x11 must be equal to 10 times 11. 
And then the problem states that we should add 20 to the first 4 and then subtract 24 from each of the last 7. So from here, we subtract, um, we subtract, oh sorry, we add 20 to the first 4. So we add here plus 20, plus 20, plus 20, and another 20. To balance the equation, we must also add four twenties on the right side. Yes, as 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 a as part of the additional property of equality. If we added four twenties here, we also have to add four twenties here, and then we have to subtract um, the last seven. We should subtract twenty four. So we add twenty four here, twenty four, and twenty four. Another twenty four. Again, as part of the as a consequence of the addition property of equality, we should subtract 7, 24 is right here. So we have here x1 plus 20 plus x2 plus 20 plus and so on plus x10 minus 24 plus x11 minus 24 is equal to 10 times 11, so that's 110. 4 times 20 is 80. And then 7 times 24 is 168. So the right side is equal to 22. So let's call this new sum S. So we have S is equal to 22. If we want to find the mean of this set, we just divide by the number of elements, which in this case is 11. So we divide both sides by 11. So we get that the mean is 2. Therefore, the answer to number 3 is 2. Okay, I hope that's clear. If you're, if you're already familiar with this method, you don't have to do all this and just make the answer the here equal to 11 times 10 plus 4 times 20 minus 7 times 24 divided by 11. That's the, that's the shortcut if you're already familiar with, uh, with the concept of the mean. Okay, I hope that's clear. Let's answer the next one. Let's answer number four. Let A and B be the last two digits of a five-digit number, 764AB. What is the largest value of the product AB squared if the number is divisible by six? So to answer this one, we recall the divisibility rule for 6. And the divisibility rule for 6 is, uh, is that the number must be divisible by 2 and 3. How is the number divisible? Is a number divisible by 2? The last digit must be even. So B, so here, B must be even. So B is even. To be divisible by 3, sum of digits is divisible by, by 3. The sum of digits of this one, of this number is, let's call that SOD, is equal to 7 plus 6 plus 4 plus A plus B, which is 17 plus A plus B. Now, we are looking for the maximum value of b squared. So, in, in, uh, generally, if we want to maximize a, B, the product of a, b squared, we want to maximize b as much as possible. Of course, that's, that, that's not generally the, uh, the answer, but it's a good guide uh, about where to start. So, let's find... Uh, let's start with the maximum possible value of b. Since b must be uh, b must be even, the highest value of b is eight, right? And if b is eight, this is eight. Seventeen plus eight is twenty-five. What's the pas the maximum possible value of a? A can be nine. 17 plus 9 plus 8 is 34, which is not divisible by 3. So that's, that's not allowed. 
if A is 8, then 17 plus 8 plus 8 is 33. So that's divisible by 3. Therefore, A equals 8 and B equals 8 is one possible value for the pair AB. And the value of AB squared when A equals B equals 8 is 8 times 8 squared is 8 cubed or 512. We can't stop here yet because we're not sure if this is actually the maximum. We have to check other values of other values of a, b. In particular, we would be looking at the value of a that is greater than what we got. We got the value of a as 8. Now we look at what if a is 9. Now if a is 9, then the sum of, the sum of digit is 17 plus... 9 plus b, which is 26 plus b, and the maximum value of b, so that the sum is divisible by 3, is 7. So b must be 7 here. Yes? Right? So we get the pa ordered pair a, b equals 9, 7. And the value of a, b squared here is 9 times 7 squared, which is 9 times 49 which is equal to 441. Clearly, 441 is less than 512. Therefore, the answer here is 512, letter C. You get it? Okay? Okay, so next final item for this set, number five. An urn contains two white balls and two black balls. Two balls are drawn simultaneously from the urn. If the balls are of different colors, he stops. But otherwise, he returns both balls to the urn and then repeats the process. What is the probability that he stops after exactly three draws? Okay. So, to answer this one, we have to identify first the probability that in each round um, the, the game stops because based on the based on the description he returns the both of the balls every time so uh, each round is independent from the other rounds so we get for we get first the probability that let's say let's call that p or uh, P win. Oh, let's just call it P. The total ways for um, to select two balls here, the sample space in this problem is 4 times 3 because we have a total of 4, uh, four, red, four, four balls, 2 white and 2 black, right? So from here, in here, we have the total sample space as 4 times 3. Now, we want to find the number of favorable outcomes. The, uh, the game will stop if the balls are of different colors. So, the probability that... Um, also, the number of ways to select the first ball is, let's say... Uh, for the black, for the black first, it's two black, and then for the second ball, you can select either of the um, either of the two balls, two 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 white balls. So this is two as well. Get it? So this is black first, and then we also account for the case. What if we select? or we got the white ball first. So that's two white balls. And then again, you, you have another two white balls here. Ah, sorry, two black balls choices for the, for the second draw. So the total number of ways, or the, the number of favor, favorable outcomes is four plus four, or 12. It's eight over 12, which we can simplify as two thirds. Therefore, the probability that you will win is two-thirds per round. I'm talking about per round, right? 
But the question here is, the probability that he will win after exactly three draws. That will mean that the first draw, uh, the, first, the first round should be losing. So the probability that uh, he will lose every round is, let's call that Q, it's 1 minus P. So that's 1 minus 2 thirds, and that's equal to 1 third. Right? So the probability that he will lose in the first round is 1 third. The probability that he will also lose in the second round is also 1 third. And then finally, if he wants to win in the third round, this is 2 thirds. Multiply this, you get 2 over 3 cubed or 2 out of 27. Therefore, the probability that he will win after exactly 3 draws is letter B, 2 over 27. Okay? What if the question is, what is the probability that he will win after exactly 2 draws? So we will just change this one as 1 third, losing in the first round and winning on the second round, which is 2 over 9. Okay? So that's it for this set. So I hope you learned something from, the, uh, from me today. If you have any questions, comments, violent reactions, please let me know in the comments. See you in the next one where I will discuss the part two of this set. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.